going gaga, role models and kids, don't panic. Sometimes it's hard not to panic because sometimes it feels that there really are no role models for our kids. You know, pop stars have traditionally been role models for kids since, since Elvis and, and before. And um, I, I often see a lot of parents make the mistake of just because your kid likes to sing along with Katy Perry or Lady Gaga or Rihanna in the car, is you don't take her to a concert. You don't let her watch the video. You don't even necessarily buy the album. The good news is that the 2011 Dollar Youth Monitor survey showed that the biggest influence for teenage girls, so their biggest role model, is their mum. Isn't that good? Um, comes back to what Joe said about the importance of us then walking our talk. Some of the other celebrities that, that, that they actually rated, the good news is people like Taylor Swift and um, Dakota Fanning, at least they have jobs, at least they do something, at least they're not a Kardashian or a Hilton. Because that's also something that we didn't have when we were growing up. You know, now the idea of being famous for being famous is pretty new and something that's pretty scary to aspire to when you think about it. You know that funny area where they're, they've grown out of Dora, love Dora, Dora the Explorer and the Wiggles and everything, but they're too young for Rihanna, hopefully, and all of that, but they're kind of looking for something else. And I push them, boys and girls, towards Bindi because she is, she dresses just in normal clothes. She doesn't wear makeup. Her mother is very present in the shows, um, so that th there's a lot of communication there. Uh, and she's got a, she does stuff. She talks about animals and, and wilderness and conservation and all of those kind of things. So I think Bindi is, is a fantastic role model if you're looking for one. And so 41% said their mum is the person that they admire most, followed by their dad and a friend. I think that's really, really good news. Digitalise, this is one of the reasons I really wanted to get out of magazines. I spent a lot of time trying to have um, put more, women of more shapes, sizes and different skin colours in the magazines that I worked for, particularly Cosmo when I was the editor for seven years. But more and more as I left, I was getting incredibly frustrated by the way images were being digitally manipulated by Photoshop. And people will say, you know, oh, it's fantasy, it's glamour. And, but I say that's bollocks. What advertising and magazines and the fashion industry do is that they hold up and show us what's normal, what's desirable, and what's the ideal physical, the ideal physical you know, physically attractive person. Um, and if those people that they're holding up as ideal don't actually exist in the physical world, what are we all comparing ourselves to, whether it's consciously or subconsciously? Nowhere does the magazine have to disclose to you that what you're looking at is not a real body. Even though when you look at a real estate ad and it has a picture of a view, it will say, not actual view. Doesn't have to say, not actual body. That's what we and our kids grow up in. We grow up in this soup and we, we walk around in this soup of lies that are, are published showing us what we're meant to look like and what these people are meant to look like. So I was um, in chair of the National Body Image Advisory Group for a while and, and we looked at all the different areas and people in society that are vulnerable when it comes to body image. And girls are absolutely one, young girls, young boys as well. But the other very vulnerable group is new mothers and women who are pregnant. And that is because the image and the message that we are fed constantly by the media is that the most important thing, more important than a healthy baby, more important than mental health after you have a child, more important even than sleep, is erasing any sign that you have just given birth to a real life human. Particularly happens around Christmas time, you'll see 101 celebrities on the covers in magazines, usually in swimsuits, talking about how they've lost all this weight. Nothing snaps back, things don't bounce back. It's, it's a long road and it, it, it does not need, in fact it must not be the top priority of a mother to be worrying about how fast and how much weight she's lost. So not only is Photoshop used to carve into people, but people are routinely stretched with Photoshop. Celebrities, fashion shots, and I'm hearing more and more from um, parents who are saying that their children's kindy photos and school photos are being airbrushed without their permission to remove, but it was only when one of them said, you know, I said, my child has a birthmark, where's it gone? And they said, oh no, we routinely clean up the images. And what is that saying to our kids? That this is how they look better. You can't um, child-proof the world, you have to world-proof your child. The best thing you can do is be with them when they're seeing those kinds of things. I think media literacy when it comes to role models and protecting our kids is, is absolutely vital.